God bless you. God bless you.
Hallelujah. Yes. Lord, I should, should I not 
rejoice? Should I not be glad? Hallelujah. I am glad and happy for that blood. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we are, we are talking at this moment about Palm Sunday. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem. And we have heard the story when I was coming with the story about Jesus entering into Jerusalem. And I thought we'd just read a little. This is taken from Luke chapter, Luke chapter 19. And I just want to look at these words. Luke chapter 19. And I'm going to talk about verse 35. Luke chapter 19. Talk about verse 35. When your friends say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for your words. We pray you bless. We pray you speak to us. We pray you sacrifice, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, your goodness towards us. Bless everyone of your children here today. Let your anointing be upon us. Hallelujah. Give us a heart to hear and a heart to accept your word. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I was reading the reading about Jesus' triumphant entry in Jerusalem. Uh, just a few days before he was arrested and taken to the judgment hall. We know what happened to him. We know what he endured. But on going into Jerusalem, he 
stone is a flat as we go to the entrance of the city and you'll find my cough. Bring him. If anyone asks you, tell him the master is in need of him. You see, Jesus sees everything. He knows everything. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful God, all knowing, all seeing. And so they found the cough. And they brought him to Jesus. The man asked, Where are you going? And they said, The master is in need of him. And so when they brought it to Jesus, the Bible says, They spread their clothes upon him. They spread their clothes in the way. And when they had come nigh even them in the center of God, a whole multitude, big crowd, whole lot of people, from my brother Mango, a whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice. Praise God with a loud voice. Let nobody tell you to keep quiet in church with your name. When we say hallelujah, when we say praise the Lord, when we say glory, we give it thanks to God. We give it praise to God. Every heart was on business. And so, they began to give God thanks to see what Jesus did. How he raised the dead. He opened the sight of the blind. He caused the lame to walk. He caused the deaf to heal. He did so many great things. One summer he says, everywhere he went, he was good. He gave the news to you. He fell the multitude. And everywhere he went, he was doing good. And when they saw him going into Jerusalem, final entry into Jerusalem, they wanted to say, Thank you, Lord, for who you are, for what you are. And they threw their clothes. Before they pass. And they begin to glorify God with a loud voice, praising Him, glorifying Him, thinking of what He has done, thinking of the sacrifice that He made, the great sacrifice. Because Jesus was the highest of the highest. And we know the story well. Why this world got into this state? It was because of disobedience. When God created heaven and earth, He looked back on His world and He said, It is good. And if God said His work is good, His work was good. And He gave a commandment to Adam. He gave the commandment, the first commandment to Adam, the very first commandment of every tree that is in the midst of the garden, every tree. Imagine how much tree Adam could pick from. You know how much tree Adam could pick from. But God said to him, of that tree that is in the midst of the garden, do not eat of that tree. You know, that's what we can blame God for nothing. We can blame if, if you have your child and we tell your child, listen, that's the fire, don't put your hand in it, it will burn you. And that child, when you turn your back, that child won't put his hand in the fire. Is that child going to blame you that she or he got burned? No, because they were one. And the way the condition of this 
world today is all because of disobedient. God is blameless. We can't blame God for nothing. God saw his work and his work was good. And the word said, all the prospect, everything is. Everything God made was good. But all the man became fire. Man spoiled God creation. But because of God's a good and loving God, He made a plan to redeem man. His plan of redemption to redeem man, to redeem Adam's fallen race. He had a plan for redemption because He said to the woman, Thy seed shall bruise the head of the serpent, and the serpent shall bruise thy heel. And Jesus was the seed that was going to bruise Satan's head. You know, so if you get that little bit to your head, it can be serious. Detrimental. Praise the Lord. So God prepared his own son Jesus to bruise Satan's head. And Satan's head was bruised and bruised back. Praise the Lord. So Jesus knew that he was going to be crucified. Jesus came to the world for the crucifixion. He came. So when he came, when he was in Garden of the Center, when they came to take him, Peter didn't realize that even though Jesus spoke to him and said, Son of Man will, will be crucified and be the heart of God for three days, and on the third day he shall rise. Peter didn't understand that, that Jesus had to die. He had to die. And so, when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he wept. He, he prayed, he prayed until the man says, his sweat became his drops of blood. Can you imagine the agony that our Lord was in? The agony. Because he knew what was going to happen to him. He knew that he was going to be taken to Pilate's heart of the call and he'll be humiliated. They will put a crown of thorn on his head. They, they will strip him naked. They will spit on him and do all sorts of manner of evil. He knew that. And anyone who knows that these things are going to happen to you, you will start to, you will feel good. You will feel good. And so he, he went to and said, Lord, that this cop. This cup be taken from me. But he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. Let thy will be done. Thy will. And the Bible says that Jesus was obedient to the will of God. It says he was obedient even unto death. Even unto death of the cross. He was obedient. Sometimes we as children of God, the least little thing we get upset. Somebody says something against us when we get upset. And sometimes we start feeling bad and start to show that face. Sometimes malice and all sorts of things. We shouldn't have that kind of thing there. We shouldn't have that thing there. I, 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 I said to someone just recently, you and I don't have an enemy, visible enemy. Our enemy is invisible. Because the Bible says we, we, we rest not against flesh and blood, but against powers, 
principalities, spiritual wickedness, high places. You and I don't have no common enemy. The only enemy we have is the devil himself. Did you know that even when Judas betrayed Jesus, Jesus was still stretching out to all the leaves of mercy and forgiveness to Judas. Oh my Lord, he called him friend. He said, friend, have you betrayed your master with a kiss? That was actually putting out all of this. So repent. That showed that Jesus was crazy. But because he's gone so far, and the devil has really wrapped him so much, he had done, he couldn't do nothing. The devil knocked him up. And he saw the only way out was to go and kill himself. But God love we made it. Sometimes in this children of God get upset. Jesus says before he leave this earth in the form of the flesh, he says, one commandment I give to you. This commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Love one another. Brethren, love is the foundation of this gospel. Love is the foundation of this gospel because God is love. And if we have love, we have peace. If we have love, we can walk without fear. If we have love, Love is the key. It is love that put Jesus on the cross. It is love that is said that Peter cut off the ear of the of the priest. Peter cut off his ears because Peter said, "Can it be this to the master?" But he did not realize that that's why Jesus came to share his. To give us hope. And sometimes it says, such love, such a wondrous love, that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. So going on, they tried to the Pharisees. You know the Pharisees and say, Master. Them say, Master. We'll be with the disciples then. They're making too much noise. They should be called their master because they were with him. That's why Jesus said, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in. Master. We'll be in their disciples. They're making too much noise. And what did Jesus say to them? What did Jesus say to the Pharisees? Those Pharisees, the same Pharisees who used to contradict him. Those same Pharisees who used to say all sorts of things about him. They lied and they called all sorts of things, beastly, but all sorts of things. Those same Pharisees who was who knew the law and was going by the law did not accept Jesus. These same Pharisees called him Master. We built their disciples. Jesus answered and said unto them, I tell you, if these should hold their peace, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. 
Brethren, we have a duty to praise the Lord. Amen. We have a duty to worship the Lord. We have a duty to give Him the glory. We have the duty to give Him the honor that's due to His name. You know, if if salvation is a thing that money could buy, the rich will have it, and the poor will die. But salvation is given to every man. It's offered to every man. Every man. And I want to look at that scripture here from, from Mark, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 11. Jesus speaking here. Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. It says, For this, Matthew 11, verse 10, for this is he to whom it was written. I send my messenger before thy face, we shall fear, we shall fear thy way before thee. Verily, verily, I say, verily I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there has none, not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence taken it by force. For, the, for, for all the laws and the prophets prophesied <coughs> unto John. From John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Accepted. 
But if you do not well, evil stands at the door and its desire will never come in. There was a chance for Abel for Cain to be again, but he could not. Today the word is still repent. The word is repent. Jesus, John came to establish that. And when I say that, this force, the violence and the force comes in many ways. I just recently read that there's about 30 African countries that the United States want to legalize LGBTQ and they refuse. And the United States want to penalize those countries. Hallelujah. Ways. They give our ways. They, they want to penalize and take away the funding. That is violence by force. That is violence. Because we know what God said. And we know what God stands for. And always stand for. And he will always stand for that. God made Adam and Eve. Made man and woman, and that's the way God wants us to be. Man, a marriage between a man and a woman. Anything out of that, repentance, repentance, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So it says, and we're going to say, verse 14. Hold fast. 
Jesus is coming soon. Hold fast. We know the story of many years Noah preached. And he preached and he preached. And Jesus, and then they want to go into the ark. They never believe him. And they don't believe us. They don't believe us. They never believe Adam and Noah, and they don't believe us. And Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be. Hallelujah. So shall it be. Because it says, in the days of Noah, they were drinking and whistling, having fun, doing what they like, all sorts of whatever they want, having their own way. Until Noah entered the ark. Oh my Lord. And God locked the door. That's it. Noah entered the ark and God locked the door. And then rain. Rain began to fall. But we have to encourage the people of this world. We have to encourage each other as well. We have to encourage each other because we know time is short. If time is short. And we may say, Jesus is coming soon. But he's coming. He said he's coming. He said he'll be back. First he'll come back in the form of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Then he will come back with the rapture when the dead in Christ shall rise and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Jesus entered into Jerusalem. He says the hour come the Son of Man should be glorified. That's in John chapter 12, verse 23. Very, very, he said, except a corn or wheat fall to the ground and die, it abided alone. Except a corn or wheat fall to the ground. I don't know if you any use to farm I used to farm when I was way back years ago. You know, you plant corn, you plant one grain of corn, and it goes up into a tree, and it's artificial corn, and that corn gets plenty corn. And then you take a plant, put it in the ground, and then germinate and go and spread and start bigger fruits. Hallelujah. Death is a good thing. It's not bad. Death is not a bad thing. And death is not something a child of God should fear. Because we have to die to live. The common have to die before we can live. And so do we. This is not it. That's what Jesus said. This is not it.
But I give it up. And I can take it up again. Oh, what a God. What a mighty God. Come on! 
But for this cause I came into this for this cause I came into this home. Father glorify thy son. He knew he was going to be crucified. He knew it. But you know, all of us have to realize the place that, you know, someday he knew he had to go on. He had to move on. He had to die to live again. He knew it. He said, What can I say? Father, save me from this hour. For this cause I came. Father, glorify thy name. This is in John chapter 12. Glorify thy name. Then came a voice from heaven saying, I have not glorified it and I will glorify it again. Hallelujah. Because Jesus came to fulfill the will of God. He was God in the flesh. The Bible says, in him was the fullness of the Godhead, bodily. The fullness of the Godhead. Jesus walked in the world was God. Was God. Walking among men. And sometimes we see, you know, Paul came to a place and he saw all this time and he didn't see with God, this unknown God. He went to Athens and he saw this thing. He said, This God, who you call this mysterious God, I will declare that to you. I will declare it. I will, I will show you who he is. And I said one more thing God is not a mystery. God is not a mystery. You know who is a mystery? Man is a mystery. God is an open book. See God here? He revealed himself. He not hiding nothing. God is an open book. But man, can you read a man's heart? Do you know what is in the man's heart? Over the last few years, I've seen so many changes. People have changed. I'm telling you, people have changed. I don't know about you. Well, I've had some experience. People have changed. People I thought I knew. They've changed. I don't know about you, but I've seen this in myself. And I said, what is this? Is not this person? Some of them cut off, you can't hear from them, some of them just withdraw themselves, all, all other things. But God, He never changed. God never changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a changeless God. Virgin, God is not a mystery. You can find God in him. He's not hiding. You know who's hiding? Satan. Satan hiding. And when they when they are when they are but you know the Bible says everything that's hidden shall be revealed. Praise the Lord. Shall it stand? Thank you. 